Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 5 of the, of the Darkness Falls series. And there is actually a wandering horde over my base. So, we have to fix that right now. Very little time for intros, I guess. <laughs> Just wandering around in the background. Get this loot. They don't get on a nice little murder spree. Not even gonna give me time to loot, huh? Just a few stragglers left over. Radiated big mama and a dead doctor. Oh, he must have bled to death or something. Oh yeah, they are taking bleed damage. Cool. It's working. The plan. It's all working. There's a few others around, but I'll let them come to me. That was a rather intense amount of left clicking. So when we collect the corpses, might as well. It's free nitrate, rotting flesh, and bones. Huh, that was running shoes. Apparently they don't give you the running boost in Darkness Falls. Not that that's such a bad thing. You can get some really cool vehicles in Darkness Falls. Figure Kane wants to incentivize people to mess with that. Instead of just running everywhere, I should probably repair the spear. Things get. Oh, what the? Whoa, hey. Okay, that's a Darkness Falls enemy, the Night Stalker. And I just set my spear to repair. Okay, gotta cancel that. All right, you're a tanky boy. I'm gonna go ahead and get myself behind this hatch. Uh oh, got some trouble here. Let's get these up, close this. All right, Night Stalker. Yep, yeah, come here. Me and you, buddy. Trying to climb in? That's not how this works. I don't think you can climb at all. Kind of stuck in that standing animation, aren't you? It's okay. Just gotta hit him enough times that he starts bleeding out at Mach 5. Not even worried about the tourist. The Night Stalker is far more dangerous? Well, now I'm worried. <laughs> My weapon broke. Fine. Me and you. Mano y mano. Maybe not. I'll go this way. Didn't I have a shotgun somewhere? Let me just run through here real quick. Ow. What is stamina? Never heard of it. I've got to get that on the bar. They're lagging up for a second. Where's that Night Stalker? And why is it so dark? Oh, really? Where is he? What the? Oh, there he is. Just barely visible. See you later, buddy. Rest in spaghetti. Now I can repair my spear. I'm gonna stop this real quick. <laughs> that was a little rough. Where's my first aid kids? Right here. Ooh, I'm getting spat at by people. That's perverse. Who did that? Big mama. It's not okay. You don't just do that to people. Okay? Okay. Good talk. <laughs> We're having ourselves a bit of a rough start here. Let's go ahead and use all of our healing. There we go. <laughs> Just a bit of a rough start. Nothing too crazy. We can eat food and drink water to heal most of our health back. And we're definitely going to have to. Since they caught me at the end of a night, I didn't have that much food and water to function with in most of that situation. Ooh, shotgun shells. Definitely gonna use that for the nighttime tirades. They broke my block up here. How dare they? How dare? Oh, oh, right, hammer. We can actually... Set up a bunch of this to be cobblestone now. Today is the day that we're- wait, is my chest there? Yeah. Chest. Nice. Let's go ahead and put everything in there. Oh yeah, weren't we gonna put a bunch of this cooked food in there too? Whoopsie. I done did a mighty forget. Let's put the pistol in there. Only one weapon at a time. In terms of ranged business. Actually, since we have food in our inventory, we'll eat this first instead of whatever the campfire has. Starting with these damn dried orange slices. Oh, it's so slow. Three at a time. You gotta go through the entire eating animation per one. We'll top off the potatoes and then call it good. There we go. The apples and the grilled tomatoes away. There we go. We have a surprising amount of food. We'll upgrade this little portion for now to cobblestone and then we'll work on the horde base. I think that seems like a sensible idea. Let's get on the inside here. Gonna have to go get some more wood soon too. I should probably upgrade from the bottom up. Don't wanna add too much weight to this whole thing. Make it collapse. That would suck. I suppose we'll upgrade this to cobblestone too. I gotta get the ladder. Don't need that thing tumbling down. This is probably going to serve to be a sensible amount of XP, but honestly, the zombies in this are probably the best XP when it comes to Darkness Falls. They do give quite a lump sum. Quite the lump sum. Now, the horde base, I'm thinking, is going to be a three-wide wall with ladders going up it, which should give the zombies plenty of space to think that they're just beelining toward me, and they shouldn't start attacking things. And I think it'll go up about five blocks. That's the easy method. Most horde bases that you see me build will probably start with a five-block high system. It's just the best way to handle it. Because in Darkness Falls, the enemies will get taller than the standard two-block height. We get behemoths and, well, big angry boys. 
dangerous zombies with big bodies and lots of health, so our objective is to steer clear of those. Alright, there we go. That should be roughly one third, no, three times more health than what was here before. I guess we'll get this wall too. Now we're probably going to need more cobblestone. Wait, is that another little wandering horde? What are you guys doing? <laughs> Stuff never ends. I definitely need more points into bladed weapons, because the best part of the spear is the power attack. And of course the crit chance. It's not the best weapon for stabbing for the body. As you can see, I just stabbed that, what was it, gangster, I think it said it was, in the booty cheeks several times and it did nothing. But the power attacks cause a nice chunk of bleeding and just, oh man, they're good. It's good stuff. Ooh, athletics. Here we go. No matter what, always invest in sexy T-Rex first. It's the most valuable perk. This also means that if I can get two more skill points, I can jump one meter higher. I won't need it right now, but we will be aiming toward that. Here we go. One more point in the blade guy. I'll take it. And that means one more point in the spear mastery before the horde knight, and I can power attack through groups of zombies. That's the goal. Just grab this loot real quick. Key card. Probably need that later. You know, I don't think I've ever actually gone through the bunker in Darkness Falls, which is obviously not a good thing. I'm gonna put that key card away and drink some water. We are getting dehydrated. And then it's Horde Knight time. We're not Horde Knight. What the hell? Horde base time. Methinks I'm just going to put my Horde base over there. I'm gonna mow down those trees and put it on the other side of the road. Keep everything nice and compact together. Also, I think in the previous episode, I'm pretty sure that yesterday I said that these trees would be grown today. But they're not. I don't know why. Maybe it takes two days once they hit this stage. We'll see. But for now, let's drink some water. Oh, this thing's inventory is overloaded. Gonna clear up some slots. I also should be able to handle water a little bit better now, because I did in fact set the forge to make, I think, 40 empty jars, which should be good for expediting this process. Should be. I'm going to go fill these bowls with murky water and set them to cook, and then it's horde time. Horde base time, not horde time. We're not activating the horde night. <laughs> not yet. Eventually. <laughs> Random corpse. These things are just lying around randomly in darkness falls. I don't know why. I think the zombies just croak completely at random. Like that, but without me being involved. Let's go ahead and get the wood off of there. Start filling the bowls. Maybe I'll just craft a bunch of these. Nah, nah, we'll stick with the jars. Probably best to just do the jars. They do give twice the amount of water. All it takes is, well, sand, which I can, I can just get sand doing this. Easy. Sad. There's 18 right there. I don't remember. How much does it take? Man, the poor. This it takes. Wait, what is this? What is this? Is this a different forge? Advanced forge. Okay, so it takes two crush sand for a normal forge to create a jar. So collecting these gives me nine jars per block of sand. And I guess I'm getting stones too, which doesn't hurt. Just not very many. <laughs> not very many at all. You can power attack with the scrap iron shovel to do more damage to blocks, but the problem is the animation is slower than the left click, the standard attack, which makes me wonder. Oh, I broke my thick. Let me repair that and set more cobblestone blocks to be crafted. Another 2,500 should do. That's 250 blocks worth. It just confuses me. A lot of the scrap iron equipment is like that. Power attacking isn't always the best idea, at least with the mining stuff, the shovel, the pick, and the fire ass. Now let's make our way to the campfire, cook up some water, or at least queue it up. No, we'll just take some food into our inventory. One stack should be okay. But now, cook some water. I suppose we'll set up some potatoes to cook too. Maybe I've done the thing that I do again and just over collected something. So we're going to be mowing down those trees, and that's where the horde base is going to be. Fairly close to our normal base, but far enough that the zombies shouldn't even think about that area, realistically. Is this like a little farmland? Oh, is there piggies? I see little piggies. They just spawned right in. Hi, piggy, piggy, piggy. You look like hide. Oopsie. Did I accidentally stab you in the face? Ah, oh, sorry, little piggy. I'll at least make good use of you. There was another piggy, but we'll just leave it be for now. Let's collect up some of this food. We'll put it next to this ranch. Don't want to put it inside just in case activating a POI or something over here would cause it to, well, disappear, because that would suck. I've had that happen before. Built a base and a horde base inside of POIs or near them, and then just regretted my entire existence as I watched it all disappear after activating a quest point. Gotta get plenty of wood. We're gonna need a bunch of building blocks. I'm not sure if 360 is going to do the trick. I like to make them big. Chunky. Very chunky. I am glad that I've gotten more points into Miner 69er. When we started out this series, I was getting truly terrible 
rates of the wood. It's like at best two per swing. Now we have this thing, and we get closer to 19 or 20. And we have plenty of stamina that we can interchangeably power attack. Two light attacks, one power attack. So, we're doing much better than we were before. Undeniably so. Just clear the land. We're doing actually quite okay. Usually by this point I'll have done something stupid and died. One, maybe two or three times. But for some reason, this playthrough is actually doing quite well. It's because we spawn next to Hugh. And Hugh's the man. The man with the plan. And I've just been playing more cautious. So, we're doing good on this playthrough. Which means, we're actually a day or two ahead of what I would normally be doing. Of course, normally I would just use a base that was a dugout hole with a very little intricacy and a high chance of me exploding. But we're not doing that this time. I have plans. These plans mostly consist of things that I think will work, but I've never really tested before. Which is honestly the best part of preparing for a Horde Knight. You build all the things, and then usually, two minutes before the Horde Knight actually activates, you go, Oh wait, there's a huge flaw here. And then you panic, and it's great. Maybe that's just me. Is that just me? It's a pipe pistol, but it's really bad. I'm just gonna scrap it. My pipe pistol. Now here's the question. Now here's the problem. I'm not sure where I want to set the stairs. Should it be on this way, or elsewhere? Should I even the ground out, or not? We're gonna pick up all this goldenrod and chrysanthemum for now, and the cotton, just to get it out of the way. Same thing with all these bits of bush. Mmm, -hmm. gonna give me some bush. Got it. Nice and even down. Actually, I don't even know if I have to do this. We are going to make, before I get too invested in anything, no stairs just ladders. We're going to make a hmm, 15 long by 5 wide. Should we do 5 wide? Probably not. If this is going to be where the ladder is, we want it to go down probably at least two blocks so that if things blow up because even normal zombies like the hazmat zombies, Bertha, the police, any of that, like they can all blow up. So, we're gonna want to be ready for that. We have to be prepared for anything that could happen. Which means, our base is going to want to be at least too deep. Because if they go boom boom right at the entryway and mess up all the ladders, then we have no point into the horde base and the AI will just take the entire thing apart. Obviously, we don't want that. Not one bit. So, two down, and then we'll fill it in with cobblestone for the first two layers. And in the future, we might have to beat that cobblestone down and replace it with concrete or steel or titanium, if we stick with this horde base. But for now, it's two down and three wide. I think we'll go back... Hmm. We'll start with just 10 blocks. 10 blocks should do. And even then, it doesn't have to be all connected to the ground like this, so... Is this 3x3? Three three? Sure, we'll stick with this for now. We're going to fill this in with cobblestone. Oh, right, Darkness Falls' ability to place blocks <laughs> is multiplied. Oh wait, no, hold on. I have to upgrade everything down here first. Silly. Silly. Right there, cobblestone. Let's get this first layer upgraded. Then when this is done, we get the second layer, and we're going to bring this up five blocks. Then I think we'll extend it back a bit. So we're going to bring this up five blocks, and then on this side, right here where I'm standing, there's going to be ladders going up. And that's how the zombies will get to us. At least that's how the AI is going to look at it. Unless they get extra derpy and just can't acknowledge ladders as a way to the player. They should, as far as I know. One of the reasons I want to do this is I want the zombies to have no direct line of sight. As you might have noticed, they seem to be capable of shooting projectiles. They can spit. They're nasty like that. Freaky. So, of course, we have to avoid that at all costs. We don't want to be getting pinged to death and start running through first aid kits and aloe vera or whatever, just to survive the night. So the plan is to make the entryway vertical instead of diagonal. Because if it stares, they might see me through the window while at the bottom stair and just start spitting at me. And that's not okay. One of the plus sides to Darkness Falls is that when you are playing this mod, you can get resources much, much faster once you actually have the proper utilities when you're at the end game. I'll be able to get stone, clay, and all the other, well, things. Cement, even titanium, iron, steel. You can get all of it much faster in this mod than you can in vanilla, which means you can comfortably make bigger bases. Matter of fact, I highly suggest you make bigger, thicker bases. Darkness Falls does not play around. I'm pretty convinced that five high should work. Maybe I should go seven or eight. Doesn't hurt, since it's purely vertical. It's a pretty small investment, just going up with a three by three square. I mean, I could probably try to make this just function as a horde base, but it's a bad idea. 
Let's see, what do we have so far? We have one, two, three, four, and that would be layer five. Well, first things first, let's set up some ladders here, right down to the ground. We even want the zombies to be accessible to it. Yes, yeah, so this is the fifth layer. You know what? We'll go seven. Just in case. It is Darkness Falls. You want to go higher, thicker, everything. Just do more. Always do more. You never know what could happen. And I think the higher I go, the more likely they are to just go for the ladders. Maybe? I might be wrong. But this is layer six. We'll do one more after this, and then we'll start moving back. Roughly seven blocks, and then we'll have to connect that to the ground. <laughs> okay, the speed at which you can place things is almost a little unruly, but it's still convenient. I'd rather have it than not need it, than need it and not have it. Let's go ahead and equip the ladders, and we'll just set this whole thing up right now. Three full layers of ladder. Here we are. All the way up we go, like so. Now we just start upgrading. This is just going to be a cobblestone base for the Horde Knight. I don't have a cement mixer yet, so we're just stuck here with this. Almost done here. This is the core part of the horde base. If everything else falls but this exists, we can kind of barely sneak by if we're up at the top. And we have something blocking the zombies from us. So they would come up here and then it would, well, we're going to make a little thin bridge. Probably one wide. Then we'll put some... I don't know, poles or something on the side to convince them that it's a wider area than it seems. But this is the plan. They come up to that area, and then they try to cross a bridge. Actually, should we even do the bridge? They'll start spitting at us. We'll do one wide. <laughs> that works for me. Because then they'll have three blocks to see me, and then the one block there. So this is where the actual base would begin. Should we connect this to the ground? No, nah, probably not. Actually, yeah, we should. Just right here. And then we'll extend it back roughly another five blocks. That should do. Now we'll get this, upgrade it to cobblestone, and make our way up. There, we want to upgrade all of these, give them more horizontal support. Typically, the way it goes is that the higher tier block you have, before trying to extend out, the more blocks it can support horizontally. So since we have this up to cobblestone, if we look at the cobblestone blocks here, we can look at the data. Usually. Oh, I guess I can't. Well, they generally have more horizontal support than a standard block like this, or a wood one. There we go. Go out about five blocks and then extend it down again. Oh, before it breaks, we gotta connect it to the ground. There we go. Two down. Every time. Give it a nice little upgrade. It is wonderful that the hammer here just immediately upgrades in a single tap. Like it should. In vanilla, you have to wait until the nail gun. Granted, going to the nail gun in this, I think, allows you to upgrade faster, but... Even then, it's pretty nice just being able to do this from the get-go. So we have this. This extra pillar right here isn't really needed, but it just helps me understand where I'm trying to go with this. Think I'm going to make this too wide on either side. Bars. I mean, I could do three. I have plenty of resources, right? Yeah, I have over 5,000 cobblestone. I could do three. Then we'll just stick with two. No need to overdo it. If we need to extend later, we will. For now, this will do. So that one wide gap should stop them from all being able to attack at the same time. They'll have to funnel into that one block. They might get irritated and start punching the ground, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and extend this down to the ground as well. Dig out beneath it, trying to be relatively sensible with the amount of resources that I consume, but eh, I'm not too concerned about it. It's not like the Horde Rush series where I have to really penny pinch. It is still Darkness Fall, so I might get bopped, but I think I can handle at least the first Horde Knight. I'm slightly trained, at least up until this point. Let's go ahead and get this side down to the ground as well. And there we go, connected. Now the plan is to extend this back, along with the other bits, and give us a nice little floor to work with. And of course a wall and ceilings, etc. So, that means we're going to want to come back here, and I think I'm going to... You know what? No, maybe I should fill in these centerpieces. Just give us more structural integrity. I can just fill the entire thing in. I have the time and the resources. Should I? Hmm. Would I? I think I would. And that's the problem. Sure. We'll at least make the wall connected. No holes in it. I don't want to give them any reason to start blowing out the pillars. The more health we have at the bottom of the base, the more likely they are to go to the top of the base. So, that's our plan. 
Yeah, seems like the best bet. As long as this is thick enough, they won't think that they can just blow this out to make me drop down to the ground. It still irritates me that the zombies seem to have a high-level engineering degree. They just detect all the weaknesses in your base and start punching them. Even if it's not like an actual weakness, they'll just make one. <laughs> they understand the structural integrity of this game better than any player, that's for sure. There we go, and then we connect these and start the upgrading process, and then we'll set up our floor. And if it seems like this only being one thick, or one, yeah, one thick, if it seems like it only being one thick is going to be an issue, if they start punching holes in it, then we'll make it thicker. We'll connect the entire thing if we have to. I'm okay with that. It's practically my specialty. It's overdoing it. Collecting too many resources for my own good. The hope for this series is to at least get it to the point where we're being attacked by... Succubus and giant behemoth demon monsters with tentacles. Yeah, I'll probably fill in this portion too. Actually, you know what? No, I don't need to. There's no reason. Actually, I didn't even have to build any of that. So we'll leave that like that. It'll be easier to build the rest of it if we come up here and we start filling in the floors. Mm, floor flavor. We upgrade these and then we're gonna have to set up walls. We have to consider what we're going to do for the front because if we set up normal blocks, so from this distance, if I have a hatch right here, Say on this block, and then maybe on this block facing this way. If I am right here and they come up the ladder, I don't think they will spit from this range. If they do, we may have to break some things down and reconsider our build. But my assumption is that they shouldn't from a, what is that, like a four block distance? There's no reason to. But we'll see. I've been wrong before. I've I'm wrong like once every 15 minutes, basically. After that point, it would be something like this. And I'll put hatches up there as well, so I can choose to stand at the sides and drop them. Let's see, how high do we want to go? Is four okay? It seems fine, right? Four should be okay. We don't need anything too crazy. Now what we want to do is fill in the corners. Now we'll just use normal squares. I don't want to overcomplicate it. I was going to do half walls again, but oftentimes I just end up beating them down and then replacing them with normal squares anyway. All of my builds, my brain can only wrap around simple <laughs> Minecraft type squares. So we'll get all of this upgraded and then we'll get a ceiling. We can, of course, make this vertical as well, and because the entry point to the horde base isn't too far away, we could, if we wanted to, extend out a base floor like this, and then set out hatches or something of that sort, and just start dropping pipe bombs in this area. We could even set up uh, walls over here so that the pipe bombs won't fall out. Good, good options. It's a more compact base than what I typically make, but that means that we have access to different strategies. Oftentimes, if you find that life is oddly repetitive, your best bet is to simply start doing things differently. And I know that it would probably be a little repetitive if I were to just recreate her royal girthiness from the hardcore series. So instead, let's get creative. I say as I basically just create a square connected to another square, but hey, you can only get so creative. If you start getting aesthetically creative, well, that can cause problems. Actually, what I could do is set up like that, and then, say if we put ladders right here, then we'll put it on the inside, and then we'll put another on the outside so they don't think that they can jump up here. Actually, no, that's the climbable portion. So we'll just put the ladders on the outside, like this. There we go. And we'll put some on the inside here, right? Does that mean that you can't climb this? Is that, is that a thing? I think I can't climb it. Yeah, because it's got to be the inside of the block, so I can't climb this one i can climb this one but if i go up try to climb this one i can't good so the zombies won't be able to climb these because they're outward facing now the reason why i set that up is so that i can wear my ramps right here i could come up here and start shooting at the zombies hmm? eh? seems like a good idea if you ask me at least being capable of it and the zombies won't attack through them because i'm not standing behind them most of the time we're also going to want to put a pole, I think, right? Yeah, I think a pole would probably be a good idea. Unless, is there a thinner pole? Something smaller? Oh, there's a tiny little baby one right here. That's something. Pillar 0 0.25. <laughs> Guess we could do this. This might be too small to even stop them from doing anything, though. But we'll try. Put this on the outside here. And yeah, screw it, we'll put it on the inside, too. If it doesn't work, we'll just break them down. So we'll do that, and then, to make the iron hatches... Let's see, just takes forged iron, which we can make now. Go us. For now, we'll do two placeholders. Move the wood from the hot bar. One hatch here, and then one hatch here. And that would be the plan. We'll put another one, just for security of mind. Eh, this 
really isn't necessary. Just to keep it there for now. I already built it. But we have to give ourselves a ceiling to work with. So let's do that. Now I would make this out of the ladders so I can shoot up at the birds like I did with Big Bertha. I mean, her own girthiness. Get my names mixed up. But the reason why I'm choosing not to is because the birds at some point will start spitting at us too. And we don't want that. The last thing you want to do is spend the night eating bird fireballs. I'm good on that business. All good. Let's go ahead and get this little ring upgraded. And then, oh, we didn't even set up a back wall. Well, I do kind of want to extend that further back. For now, we'll just set a door in that back area right there. And some ladders. That should be okay, right? Maybe. Yeah, we'll just seal it off. Worst case scenario, we can beat the walls down when we're done. Rearrange when necessary. I am slightly paranoid because this is Darkness Falls, but I've also set the blood count, the blood moon zombie count, up to 64. And I don't know, I don't know if Kane, uh, if he changed the maximum amount of zombies that can come in and attack you during the horde nights based on the days or if it's something else. Because he might have just said, hey, we're going to remove the cap. The seventh day? Nah, you can get 64 zombies at a time, hundreds of zombies over and over. Alright, so we've got this, and if they start spitting at us, and we have to, we can back up here and... Where, where's the... what's my button for the... is that the... this is it. The shotgun. We can start blasting them. So anyway, I started blasting. So that's that. Now we just put a roof on it. It's very simple. Very simple build. Oh dear. It seems to be getting dark. I might have to go and get more cobblestone. Uh, we should make another hatch. I will be making a way into... We'll just upgrade it to wood for now. Nothing too crazy. But I will be making a way up to the ceiling. Not into... Just in case I decide to do anything vertical with the base, or if I have to retreat all of a sudden and would rather have a broken leg than be eaten alive. We'll see. There's that. Now we get our hatch down. There we go. Done. This is basically it. This is the whole thing. Ah, see, I'm walking into this and I am bumping my head on it, which means that the zombies might actually have a slightly harder time getting in because of that 0 0.025... Whatever, oh, that's not a repairing thing. That's a repairing thing. 0.025 pole thing. So, board base. Easy. That was actually quicker than I expected. Because of Darkness Falls' uh, upgrading thing, where you can just one-tap most blocks to upgrade them immediately, and the fact that you can place blocks at Mach 5, that was insanely fast. Which means that I can actually just go further. I need to craft more blocks. Do I have more wood? I do. Let's get that on the bar so I can see it. Building blocks. I need more. You know, we'll craft all of those, and then we'll go cut down some trees. Clearly, we're going to need more than 300. Where is my ass? There it is. Fire ass. I like this bird's nest, too. More feathers. I'd like to piece together a crossbow with the autoloader before the horde night, but I don't think that's going to happen. That requires a workbench and generic schematics and probably steel or something. I can actually check real quick. What would it take for the crossbow autoloader? Right here. It says mod tier 2. Crafted at a workbench. Generic schematics. Clue. Okay, I could get the parts for it. The generic schematics would be the hardest bit. I think I only have three of them. But I think realistically, I'm not going to be able to achieve that. I could invest points to get a crossbow, but I think it's going to be a spear horde knight. Seems like the best bet. I'm going to stop those blocks real quick and repair my ass. Time to harvest some good old trees. Mm -hmm. Tree flavor. Might as well get some athletics levels while I'm doing this. Of course, collect any food along the way. I really don't like these fir trees. The ones that have the leaves just up in your face while you're trying to cut them down. That's no bueno. Pine trees, I mean. Definitely pine trees. Wood is one of the resources of all time. I might have to plant down some of these acorn seeds and such, just to reduce the odds that I have to leave the area to get more wood. It's interesting how this is balanced out, because with the scrap iron fire axe, I'm doing about as much damage as I would be doing with the stone axe in vanilla. But if I were to upgrade to the iron axe, I would be doing most likely more than vanilla or even, and then the steel axe would just be superior. When we get to the titanium axe, I can basically one-shot every tree I come across. At least in my experience, that's how it goes. Bird's nest, beat it up for extra feathers. Sadly, no eggs. I'm curious, actually. In Darkness Falls, can you just eat an egg to your face? Well, you can, but you'll get food poisoning. I guess you have to cook them. They're not as good as they used to be. Or at least not as good as they are in vanilla. In vanilla, you can just walk around, collect some bird's nests, and if you really want to, you could just feed yourself with raw eggs. 
if you're into that kind of thing. We're gonna need a little bit more wood to try to get closer to 3,000. Yeah, 3,000 should be fine. And then we'll just get to thickening the base, I suppose. The horde base. Because that's kind of like the economy version of what I want to do. What I want to do is make it, well, thick. Loads and loads of redundancies. That's how you control the enemy AI. It's the only way to control the enemy AI. And if you don't know how to control the enemy AI, you're gonna catch a lot of L's during Horde Nights. You don't want to do that. Don't catch L's. Let somebody else in the crowd catch them. Ooh, potatoes. Dog. Hello, dog. You just not gonna attack me? I mean, cool, I guess. Maybe I should have kept him. He's a good puppy. Do I have 3,000? Let's hit this tree real quick. Oh yeah, I do. Well, we'll just take this one out and call it good then. Off we go. Back to the horde base. Sun's almost down, so I might end up spending the night just thickening this thing. I doubt it would take that long, but we'll see. I could... Hmm. Should I? Yeah, sure. We'll just make this little portion of ground out of cobblestone too. Just beat this out down two layers and fill the entire thing in. Nice and thick. I have the time, I have the resources, so I might as well. There's the first layer. It truly is excessive, but this is Darkness Falls. You'll see, as we move into the later Horde Nights, maybe not this one, but as we move into the later Horde Nights, you'll see exactly how dangerous the spot can get. In Darkness Falls, you can't just bank on the concept of having ranged supremacy against the zombies. It doesn't work that way. Because at some point, they're gonna start spitting fireballs. Not just loogies. My shovel broke. Once they start spitting fireballs, the fireballs set you on fire and, well, things escalate quickly. The damage that you can do becomes very important because the zombies will start to regenerate health if you're not careful. And it's not just the radiated who naturally regenerate health. Normal zombies, they'll be given the class of demon zombie or demonic and then they'll get insanely strong insanely tanky hit like a truck and be given health regen and oh man it's dark i gotta go get my torch oh it's already radiated it's all over the place maybe i'll just craft a torch instead yeah that seems like a plan i can however see my campfire and i need moisture so i'm gonna run to it while being mindful of my stamina and after we get some moisture, we'll head back to the horde base to keep upgrading it. Hoping that we don't get murked in the middle of the night while we're upgrading. Ooh, that's real wet. I suppose I can fill up on my food, too. Interesting. So, sometimes you get your jars, your empty jars, back. Sometimes you don't. It's very weird. I don't understand it. Temporarily, we'll replace the crowbar with a torch. What the? <laughs> and put it in the fuel slot of the campfire. That's new, at least for me. I don't see that very often. Should set things to cook again. Eat some yum yum yucca. Bow down a handful of potatoes and let's make our way back to the horde base. We can. It's looking a little ominous with the hole blown in the traitor there. Just don't look directly at it. Is that my horde base? Having a hard time telling. I don't want to whip that torch out because it'll make me easier to see. I don't want the radiators coming at me right now. Goodbye, son. It's nice knowing you. Here we go. Let's go ahead and put this. I think right here should be fine. Maybe. Uh, let's kind of uh, put it right there. It's just better when I'm holding it. But that'll do for now. Let's get back into stealth mode and get digging out this second layer. Then we'll get to thickening the base. Do it with a thickness. It's another mining level. How high am I at this point? High on life. 46. A little more to go. Just a bit. We put this last point into Spearmaster. Not many other things I need to invest in right now, but that last point to Spearmaster is what gives me the penetrative ability with power attacks. I thought it was just generic attacks, but no, it's power attacks. Either way, it works for me. Being able to hit three enemies with a single melee attack is pretty good. You just have to keep them lined up, which is why I'm trying to force them onto a single block with this horde base. That block. That one right there. If that doesn't work, well, we'll find a different way to do that. Maybe we'll have to make the bridge too wide. Even with it just being a single block, it's hard to get these zombies to stay in a line. They tend to just stand on the very edge of the block. They're edgy. Well, I guess we're getting more clay. It doesn't hurt. It's easier to get stone than clay. So, this is, to our benefit, just punching out a bunch of dirt. And that would be the last of it. Now we have to see exactly how much this upgrading noise is going to attract the zombies. Hopefully it's not too bad. We'll fill in the entire layer first, and then we'll start upgrading. So we don't have to switch around too much. Trying to minimize the amount of stuff that I'm doing all at once, so if I get attacked I won't get all kerfuffled. Here we go. Oh, actually, if we look in the lower left at the... I guess the, the noiseometer, the how unstealth you are. This actually isn't too bad, just moving around and stealthing. 
surprisingly low. It's only hitting 50 something. I thought it was going to max out at 100. I'm pretty sure that's what it does in vanilla. That means that if you invested in the From the Shadows perk, which I think is, let me check, yeah, that's under athletics, that means that you would reduce that by about 10% per level. That's not bad. You can actually stealth in this. The only downside is, there's no stealthing on Horde Knight. Good luck trying to do that. So we're gonna start by filling in this area. I was gonna leave it as pillars, but we're gonna fill this entire thing in. Actually, you know what, now we'll start here. <laughs> Double, triple redacted. We're gonna go ahead and just keep doing it one layer at a time. This is the easy method. Probably the fastest too, because I can just crouch and hold the place button. Because of the darkness falls speed up, I can fill in these layers insanely fast. Then we get banked upgrading. Unusually busy for nighttime activities, but it doesn't hurt. We're getting a lot of XP out of the ordeal. It looks like we'll run out of wood before we run out of cobblestone, if we run out at all. I think we should be fine though. Probably. Most likely. Actually, I'm not sure. This is quite a few blocks, but it doesn't hurt to have them. <laughs> this is going to be very thick. Just gonna go all the way to the top. There's no reason to leave extra space. Not gonna use it for anything. It wouldn't help during the Horde Nights. At least as far as I know it wouldn't. <laughs> the speed placing of these blocks is actually insanely convenient. I need a serious round of applause for Kane on achieving that. Unless this is just some kind of adapted modlet, and perhaps I just don't pay enough attention to the release of seven days mods but it's impressive nonetheless i enjoy it i enjoy the crap out of it also i just gotta level up which is great i need more skill points i'm hoping to hit minor 69er or hit the mining skill up at 60 as quick as possible so i don't have to think about it there's a few things that you want to invest in relatively early with this so you just never have to invest in them again one of them is Pack Mule, because as far as I know, you will need that perk. Oh, here we are. Biker. That was surprisingly easy, actually. Thought that that was gonna call in a bunch of other zombies, but nope. Just one angry biker, here to give me a bad review on Yelp. Forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Got distracted by zombie. Thought that that was really gonna escalate. Feel like every time I get attacked in the night type when I'm playing in this particular mod, it escalates every time. I'll just get back to upgrading. I think this layer will actually make it so that they'll just attack the walls below. They won't be able to jump up because it's too high. Both like T-O-O -O high and too high, two blocks. That's all it really takes. At that point, they just start attacking things. Let's go ahead and pick up the torch and move it higher. Just put it at the top. Why not? Low lighting is still better than no lighting. If you played D&D as a human, you understand that a little more than the average person. Having low light vision is everything. Having dark vision is world changing. How many more layers do we have? Three? Yeah, we can achieve that before the night is up. Wait, upgrading the last layer is going to be awkward as hell. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Um, well, I think we're gonna have to use one of the wonderful mechanics of Darkness Falls. Here's something I actually should have highlighted a while ago. Let's set this up. See this? This is a one block wide square, right? If I jump and I crouch, I can stand in, <laughs> in a one block wide square. I could use a gun in here too. Actually, I can make a whole horde base based around this. Because as far as I know, the zombies do not go through a single block like this. They'll punch it. Hmm. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I would do that. Maybe I will do that. Yeah, I might. All right, let's go ahead and fill out this bottom portion. We're going to stop going up on these side bits here. I actually shouldn't have even gone as far as I did with them, but whatever. We have to, we'll break them down. But we will reinforce the bottom of the bridge here, and then start putting together the rest of this. Starting from the gaps here, because we don't need anything from behind them to be changed. It can all stay as is. Really, it's just too convenient being able to place things at Mach 5. Please, fun pips, add that to vanilla right now. Just do the thing. Make it go scrot. I like when the blocks go fast. I like when the crafting go burr. And I like when the zombies go grrr. We'll do one layer above us, I suppose. Let's go ahead and grab the torch. What am I going to do with this? Place it on the side, maybe? I think that's all we really can do. Put it right here. Is it going to light things up? enough yeah we'll just start doing this one layer at a time <laughs> i feel surprisingly safe i'm just surrounded in cobblestone this is like home to me look at all of it just this nice little pocket of cobblestone this is how i'll spend my horde night just in a pocket 
Methinks, after I do this thickening, there shouldn't be much else to do with the horde base. And I might just stick with my standard strategy of waiting for the horde base to fall before I make any adjustments, because, well, we're not running hardcore this time. You'd think we were, because I've been playing super safe, but no, we're not. It's just working out that way. I don't know why. It's just that kind of playthrough. The plan is, once this playthrough is finished, when it seems like the horde is going to be <laughs> intolerable, then we'll go ahead and start a hardcore run and see what we can do. After we've gained our sea legs entirely with the series, with Darkness Falls in particular, then we'll figure out how to handle hardcore. This is pretty high. <laughs> Oh shit, I wasn't crouching for that. But, uh, yeah, we should be fine. I'm gonna have to craft a bunch of these survivalist torches. It's apparently a class-specific thing. Because I pick survivalist, this torch doesn't produce heat. At least that's what it says, right? Description. Can be used as a light source or weapon, blah blah blah. Place with secondary action. Does not attract zombies. Unique to survivalist class. So yes, this torch doesn't produce heat. Give this thing a little peek. Yeah. I mean, this, this little corner thing is a little weird. The zombies might get stuck in there and start doing dumb zombie things. I'm gonna have to break that down, actually. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to break this down, sadly. You know, no, no, no. We'll leave it until it becomes a problem. That's the strategy. That should always be the strategy. How many blocks high is that? It's like 15? <laughs> I guess that works. So the idea is that they would come up here and then go, oh, there's but this one spot here that I can cross through. So I guess, actually, you know what? This doesn't even have to be three high. Let's make it two high. Or uh, three wide. Three long? <laughs> I'm removing one of these blocks. It's the easy way to figure out what I'm trying to say. Let me do this down to where those other blocks are, on both sides. Gotta use up that stamina, get some power attacks in. Just keep using that stealth. Gotta get them athletics levels. Oops, out of stamina. Let's go ahead and bring this down at least two squares so they won't use it as a platform. Come on, just break already. <laughs> Having to rotate like this while sneaking is a little nauseating. Got my stamina back, back to power attacking. Think two down should be fine. It's gonna look a little weird, but it'll work, right? Yeah, yeah, that should do. It should funnel them a little bit better. So, this has been episode five of the Darkness Falls series. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye.